Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Covered. I am Penjo and welcome to Silmaris Dice Kingdom, a game where we run ourselves a fantasy kingdom, but the results of our actions are all determined by dice rolls. So dice are effectively our currency for all of the things that we want to do in the game. So combat, diplomacy, exploration, they are all done by dice rolls. And there's also some very nice story bits too. So they're a little bit like choose your own adventure type section. So a situation will present itself and then we get to choose how our character reacts in that particular situation and then we get to see what has happened because of the decision we have made. So it's kind of got two levels to it, I suppose. You've got a kind of higher level kingdom management bit, and then you've got a more personal sort of character development bit, which is quite nice. It's quite nice to have the sort of the two tiers of management there. This is the beta version of the game. So of course, it's not the final version. There might be bugs and glitches and all that kind of stuff. But of course, if you're interested, there is a link to the Steam store page in the video description below if you want to go and check it out. However, as I record this video, it's not quite out yet. The release date on Steam says October. October 2020. So it's due to be released imminently, but I can't give you any more sort of information other than that. But we were given a key to this by the publishers, which is very, very lovely. So thank you very much, publishers. That's very, very kind. So I think let's go, shall we? Let's go roll some dice and run ourselves a kingdom. Okay, here we go. So we've got ourselves a lovely world map and it's very, very pretty. All the sort of you know, trees are sort of blowing in the breeze and all that kind of stuff. And the waves are crashing on the shore. It's very nice to look at. So this is our city just here. Our home city is right in the middle of the world map and it's called Thyla. I think that's how you pronounce it. We'll say it's pronounced Thyla. So that's where we live, but there's other cities around the place. So Tholum to the north, there's Idlemar over there near those trees. We've got Arhaven down here. There is Zelhir on the coast. And then up here in the kind of mountains, that is Falador. And they've all got their own opinions of each other and of us and all that kind of stuff. So yes, we want to make sure that we're on people's sort of, on people's good sides. However, I think the little diamond in the corner represents their sort of attitudes to us. And I don't think Falador and Arhaven like us very much. There is a thing up here where you can look at the diplomatic situation. And uh, yes, indeed, Falador hate us and Arhaven hate us. So King Odhon and King Ulrich really aren't very fond of us at all. In fact, King Ulrich, his portrait, he's very cross. He is a very, very cross man indeed. So yeah, he looks really grumpy. I imagine, I imagine if he's got a face like that all the time, he probably just hates everybody. He just hates all the people. The other people though, Queen Lodri, King Gorm and Queen Alcadra, they're all neutral to us, which is okay. That's absolutely fine. So uh, yeah, we'll take that. Absolutely. If only two of the five people are hating us, that's a pretty good start. And then down here, you can see our council. So we're the king and these are our councillors and each of these people specializes in a different area. So as you can see here, this chap here, he's our war counselor. This person is about diplomacy. This person is about knowledge. This person is about adventure. And this person here with the obvious sneaky person's hat is about kind of plotting and intrigue. And they link directly to these dice up here because these dice, these are our special dice. They're effectively the currency we need to do everything in the game. So the black dice are war dice. We use those for going to war and fighting and all that kind of stuff. The blue dice are influence dice. We use those for sort of diplomatic reasons. So, you know, for signing truces and treaties and all that kind of stuff. The yellow dice are knowledge dice. I think we use those for sort of improvement. So sort of buildings and learning new stuff and technology and all that kind of stuff. These here are adventure dice. We use those for going out and adventuring and exploring and you know being brave and looking at new stuff. These here are intrigue dice. So we use those for being you know, a little bit sneaky beaky and creepy and all that kind of stuff. And then we have ourselves fate points and these allow us to re-roll dice rolls that have not gone our way I would say. Now you'll notice that we have got eight adventure dice and five of everything else. That's because when you start the game, you get to choose what kind of king you are and you get a boost. You get three extra dice at the start of the game for the particular type of king you are. So yes, we chose to be a nice adventuring sort of king. I think it said we were bold. So yeah, we like going out and exploring and adventuring and finding new things, which is why we have eight adventure dice as opposed to five of all the other ones. So I think what happens is when we play the game, little kind of extra markers will appear all over the map that we can then interact with. So maybe one of them might be a fighting event. So we have to go and roll some war dice and go and do some fighting. Another one might be an intrigue event. So we have to go and do a little bit of spying and all that kind of stuff. So they will pop up around the map as we play the game, but it's only turn one. And yes, the game is lovely and turn-based, which I do like. I like a turn-based game because it means I've got time to think and I can just sip at my tea. It's a nice leisurely pace. So because it's only turn one, nothing has happened yet. No events have popped up. I'm sure they will. I'm sure there will be many, many events for us to deal with. Um, so there's nothing for us to deal with directly right now. And also we don't have that many dice, but it might be worth going to have a look at potentially seeing how much effort it's going to be to make Falador or Arhaven not haters 
quite so much because they both really don't like us. Now, who was the really angry one? There you go. King Ulrich in Falador. He looks really, he looks really angry. He looks like he just stood on an upturned plug and he's really hurt his foot. So why don't we go and have a look at uh, King Ulrich here over in Falador and just see exactly what it would take for us to maybe make him not hate us so much. So if we press open, we go over to Falador. So this is us at the city of Falador and these are the actions that we can take in that particular city. So we can besiege the city. We can sign a non-aggression pact with King Ulrich over in Falador or we could go and do ourselves a little bit of spying and then in each of these sort of blocks here these particular actions you can see how many dice they get to roll if we want to carry out that particular action so if we wanted to go and besiege the city of Falador they would get to roll 16 war dice and we only have five war dice available so they would be rolling an awful lot more dice than us and the idea is that we go into battle if we did that we would roll our five dice and they would roll 16 dice and then we see how many of these little sort of bird symbols are actually rolled on those 16 dice for them and on the five dice for us and the person with the most bird symbols at the end once all the dice have been rolled wins that particular encounter so of course there is a very very small chance that we might actually win we could go there with our five war dice and besiege that place and we could get five bird symbols on the five war dice that we roll and they could roll entirely all blanks and they're 16 however the chances are very very small of that happening so I don't think we should do that at all if we besiege their city that would be a terrible idea and then no doubt they would come over to us and they would kill us a bit so let's not do that I think our other two options are not really going to go well either so non-aggression pact they've got the 10 blue influence dice as opposed to our five so the chances of us winning that one are very very small and even spying I mean okay we're not quite so far off the mark with spying but uh but yeah we've got five intrigue dice and they've got nine so the likelihood is that they would beat us in a spying sort of event as well. So we can't do anything right now. Now, is it any easier over in our haven? Um, oh, crikey. Our haven are even better at doing the fighting. Our haven have 20 war dice available. So yeah, we really, really wouldn't beat them at all. And then the non-aggression pact is 10. The spying is only 8. So spying is a tiny, tiny bit easier over in our haven, but still, I don't think we're going to succeed because we just don't have enough of these dice. We do not have enough of those dice available in our sort of pool of dice right now in order for us to do any of these things. But of course, there are ways for us to get extra dice to add up into our lovely dice pool up there, and that is by using this option here for get dice. So essentially, this calls upon our wonderful counselor squad. So we go, counselor squad, assemble, and then we can get them to roll a number of dice, which might give us extra dice up here in our pool. So as you can see, they yeah, can roll whatever they like. You can say, right, okay, everybody, we need loads of intrigue dice all of a sudden for a particularly tricky intrigue event coming up. Everybody roll some intrigue dice. But this guy here is our intrigue specialist. So he gets to roll extra intrigue dice. Everybody else, not really very good at intrigue. They're not that good at it. So they only get to roll one extra dice. And for every dice that they roll, when they roll it, if it comes up with a blank, we get nothing up in our pool of dice. If it comes up with the little sort of bird symbol, that adds one into our pool of dice, if that makes sense. So what we'll do is for now, we'll get everybody working on their special area. So there we go. So everybody is going to roll two dice in their own particular unique special zone. So let's roll these dice and then we'll see what happens. So that was okay. That was actually pretty good. So Chappie here, War Chappie, with his wonderful flowing locks, uh, he only got one war dice to add to our total. Um, sort of diplomatic lady there. She looks a little bit like Scarlett Johansson. Um, she got two diplomacy dice or whatever they're called those blue ones you got two of those so two will go to our pool you only got one yellow one you got two greens and you got two reds that was a pretty good roll that was very good we only had two missed rolls there that was very nice if we want to we can re-roll it i think that would be foolish so we will accept that and those dice are now all up here so now we've got 10 adventure dice and seven intrigue dice and six knowledge dice and seven influence dice and six war dice and that's it our turn is now done. We can't do anything else in here. Our councillors, they've all had their go. We can click on our city. We can click on our city and there's all these extra bits and bobs that we can do. I mean, you know, it's got walls, which gives us an extra bit of sort of war dice and we can do all these other bits and bobs, but we don't need to do them right now. We don't need to do all these things right now. We don't have to expand the barracks or expand the library. That comes into play a little bit later. So let's move the game on. Let's actually just sort of get things going. So here we go. And this is our story event. Our first story event looks horrendous. Okay, right. 
Right, so our first story event isn't something nice. It isn't like, hooray, the, the, all the bakers of the town have baked too many cakes. Let's have a big party in the streets. No, no, it's about a plague of rats. Okay, the rats. Spewing out of the sewers, the rats infest the city. They swarm into the streets, the houses, towers and palaces. Oh no, they're in my lovely palace. Phyla's warehouses have not been spared by the vermin either. If nothing is done, disease and famine will soon hit the city. Okay, so uh, this chap here, it's strange. We haven't seen so many since King Elred's time. You know the story. During the Great Plague, your ancestor ordered all the cats in the city killed on a whim. The rats have become so numerous, they run freely across the Great Hall, just as they are doing so today. Elred then imprisoned the best alchemist in the valley, uh, in Thyla. Okay, to force them to devise a potion for the rats. A potion that is harmless to humans, but so effective against the rodents that none escape. We have, of course, get records of its composition in the old palace scrolls. I could create it, certainly. So that's our sort of our counsellor person who rolls the blue dice, I think. No, no, you're the knowledge lady. You're the knowledge lady. Yeah, yes, you're the knowledge lady. So, okay, so she can probably try and remake the potion. Or, there you go, there's their sort of diplomacy lady. Pointless and dangerous. Better to have the cats come from Zell here. Just a few of them were rid of this problem in several days. Okay, you hesitate. These disgusting creatures are a powerful foe against the rats. But are the property of Alcadra, Queen of Zell here? Okay, so we could go to Zell here and say, hello, can we have all your cats, please? Uh, if we do that, it probably will rid us of the uh, the rats. But of course, Alcadra, Queen of Zell here, will then kind of be able to come to us and ask for a favour in return, I imagine. Only the gods know what her perverse mind will demand in exchange for this service. Okay, I don't want to know. Why compromise with this witch? Our soldiers can repair the walls and extinguish the fires. They are quite able to exterminate the rats and set traps. Okay, so fighty man's coming in with a different viewpoint. If our troops take care of it, our other military undertakings will need to be suspended to allow time for the work. It is time to make a decision. Okay, crikey. So, we order the soldiers to exterminate the rats. We ask for help from the Queen of Alcadra and her cats. That, because we are a bold king, which we chose when we actually set up our game, because we're bold, we get ourselves an extra fate point if we choose this. That could be quite nice. Or, wait to find the records of King Elred's poison. I think, given that this gives us an extra fate point, and they're always quite handy, why don't we just go and ask for help? I'm not up of asking for help. Let's just go and bring in a load of cats, and they can kill all the rats. Let's do that, please. Uh, okay. A rider is carrying a missive. A rider carrying a missive, sorry, is sent to the Queen's city. After ten days, the messenger returns with a response. The Queen cares little for politeness, and as expected, her price is delusional. She demands several of her ancient books and one hundred war horses. And that's not all. The Queen will only accept an arrangement if Thorion becomes her hostage until the return of her cats. What? She solemnly promises that no harm will come to him. Okay. Which one is Thorion? I can't remember which one Thorion is. If it will save the city from the rats, then I agree to hand myself over to the cow, the, the court, sorry, of Alcadra. Okay, Thorian is our military leader guy. Um, okay, right, we should have gone for the potion, shouldn't we? Okay, accept the agreement and deliver Thorian to the queen. We lose five knowledge, because we're giving away all of our ancient books, and five of our war points. Oh, that's really bad. That is very bad. But if we refuse the agreement, rats are going to overrun the city. That's a lot of stuff for us to give away. That is a lot of stuff for us to lose. And then somebody could declare war on us and we'd have no chance of defence because we'd have hardly any war dice. Um, but then we might have to, to get rid of the rats. But is it worth compromising the future sort of military safety of our city because there's some rats? We'll refuse. I'm not doing that. We must therefore find another solution to put an end to the rats. Um, okay, wait to find records of the poison. Let's try that option, shall we? So it might take us a while. And are we going to get affected by the rats? I've done it. I found the scrolls from the time of Elred. We can now try to recreate the poison. And a thing has appeared. Okay, we have caught wind of the presence of such an altar at the edge of Lake Arhaven. We should go and take a look. So now a strange altar has appeared down there. Okay, turn two begins. Everybody is now back. Thyla is doing shiny things. And yeah, now there is an action in here, which is a special action, which is make Elred's poison. So it will take six dice. Six dice. We only have the six dice. So that could be a little bit risky, but the longer we leave it, the longer we leave this, the more chances the rats are going to cause us problems. 
Whilst we're looking at this, by the way, uh, the maximum number of dice you can have in a particular sort of category at the moment is 15. So we can have no more than 15 war dice, we can't have any more than 15 influence dice, and so on all the way along to the end. However, if we choose to do one of these, if we expand the barracks, that allows us to have 30 war dice. And if we expand the library, we can have 30 yellow dice. And if we do other bits and bobs, if we expand the stables, 30 green dice, expand the palace, 30 blue dice, and expand the spy tower, 30 red dice. But I don't think we need to do them right now. I don't think they're that important at the moment. We've only got 10 of the green dice. So yeah, we've got a little way to go before we max them out. Let's do this. Let's go and make L Red's poison. So we drag Knowledge Lady onto this because she's good at that. So there we go. So we're going to have our six dice. So we're going to have our six dice that we've got here versus the six dice of sort of random chance of whether we can make it work or not. Let's give this a go, shall we? Let's have a little go. I mean, it's a chance of success at 57%. I mean, you know, it's it's just over 50-50. It'll be fine. So here we go. And we just roll these and we see what happens. So we want the bottom ones to come up with all these symbols and we want the top ones to be entirely blank. So let us roll them and let's see how we get on. And we've got, oh my goodness me. Wow. Okay, so we got six out of six on our dice. They only got three. So of the six dice they rolled, only three came up with the symbol. So yes, it's a success. That is wonderful. The poison is ready and available in large quantities. We can use it now if you wish. Uh, yes, that would make perfect sense. Spread the poison across the city. The streets, temples, palaces, squares and houses on your orders. The poison is spread to every corner of the city. Please tell me it's not fatal to humans. We did test it first, right? We did test it. Surely we tested it. Okay, now let's have a look at the strange altar. Now this, if you want to go and explore at the strange altar, it would only take five. Five of our green dice. So let's send our explorer guy, our adventure guy, over to the strange altar. So here we go, drag him onto that. So you can see, yes, we've got their five dice against our current five, but we've got more available. So why don't we just say, okay, chance of success at the moment, 58%. Let's put it up there. So now it's on 69%. That is far better. So we'll throw in an extra couple of dice just to see if we can win. And if we succeed, we get ourselves a common artifact. Well, how wildly exciting. Hooray, we can get a regular thing. <laughs> you found this spoon. Uh, okay, there we go. Let's have a little look, shall we? So roll on this. So down to the strange altar. Let's see how we get on. And we've got ourselves. Oh, they did very well. I think if it's even, if it's even, it counts as, it counts as a success to us. So I think because we've got four and they've got four, I think we do succeed with that one. Uh, yeah, we don't have the best. I suppose we got more than half, but yeah, they got four out of five on theirs. But okay, I think that worked. And we have found the commander's armor. And whoever has that equipped gets plus one to their war dice. Do you know what? Let's give that to the chappy here. Okay, right. So um, we can drag that down to you. Now, I think this is permanent. I think this is a permanent thing. I think once he has that on, we cannot do anything else with it. We could sell it right now. We could sell it, get ourselves a fate point, which is interesting, but I think we, know we kind of want that. We want that on him because that gives him more war dice. So yeah, let's do that. Let's put that on him. Yes, please give him the commander's armor. It looks very, it's got a hole in it. The commander's armor has a hole in it. Maybe fix that first. <laughs> Yeah, you know, sort of, you know, get a hammer and smash that plate back into position and it'll all be fine. So yes, so now you can see he's got that armor. He's got a thing equipped. But now he, if we go to get dice, he now gets to roll three of those war dice, which is very good indeed. Okay, I think, I think we might get you lot to just roll some more dice. I think we just get you lot to roll dice in your specialty areas and we'll just see how we get on. So roll, roll, roll. Uh, kind of mixed bag. Okay, you only got one out of the three. You did very well and you've got one as well. Yeah, okay, I'll accept that, and that's it. Our turn is done. All our councillors have taken a turn, and we have done everything we can on the map, I believe. So, okay, right, next turn, and that's a lot of dead rats. Okay, the effects of the poison are devastating. After several days, the only rodents still visible in the roads are corpses. Have we not got anyone tidying them up? <laughs> we should have a special sort of rodent corpse removal unit to go and sort that out, please. The result is so spectacular that merchants come from all corners of the valley to buy the recipe. Oh, sell the poison to the highest bidder or expel the merchants. Oh, well, why would I want to expel them? Why would I want to get rid of them? Um, just sell it to the highest bidder. That's absolutely fine. Tobias gets to work finding the right buyers who spend fortunes to acquire the secrets of making Elred's potion. Several chests full of coins are added to the palace treasury. We've now got an extra two fate points. That is very good indeed. Okay, so extra fate points, very welcome. Did anything else happen? 
Is a special event popping up around here? No, there is not. However, with fate points, we can do other bits and bobs as well. So we can re-roll dice rolls that haven't gone our way, or we can use them to uh, sort of add extra dice onto any particular dice roll that we would like. But also we can change our counselors, I believe. So we can hire better counselors by spending some fate points. So for example, um, this person here, Chappie there, Ibadino would cost us three fate points, but he gets to roll two adventure dice and one plotting dice rather than this guy here who just rolls one adventure dice. So is it worth, we've got eight of those, is it worth treating ourselves to a nice new person? Maybe we should get ourselves a nice new person. To be fair, this person here, Edo, looks much more plotty than this guy here. I mean, this guy here, I mean, he's got, he's got kind of, he looks like he's going to go breaking and entering. He's kind of got you know, a classic sort of thieves sort of hat on. But look at that. He looks way more kind of sneaky and spy-like, like an assassin. Do we get, should we get you a, a plotting? I kind of want, what do we need more of? We need more knowledge dice. But then she just did really well. She just did really well in generating that sort of poison stuff. So I don't feel like we should boot her out quite yet. But this person here, Vera, Vera, she gives us two knowledge, but also a war point as well, which could be very, very handy. Um, Let's get you. Let's get you. Let's replace you. I'm very sorry. I'm really sorry. But we're a bit low on the old knowledge dice and she gets more. Let's get you in. So, okay. Yeah. Can we get you? How do we How do we hire you? Oh, we just drag you down here, do we? Okay. Uh, replace Edna with Vera. Swap costs you three of those. We've earned those three anyway. They've come from nowhere, really. They've come from our efforts. So, yeah. Okay. We'll do that. I think that counts as her turn. So I think you know, she's spending her turn settling in and such. So she can't do anything right now. But okay, that's absolutely fine. Is there anything else that we can do? I don't think there's anything we can do. I mean, could we... How much is it there? It's 10. 10 diplomacy dice to go and have a chat with angry stood on a plug Falador. Um, no, what we'll do is we will just go and get some dice. Okay, so three dice for you, two and two and two. Okay, yep, roll. Let's get some extra dice for us. Oh, crikey, war guy's not very good. These guys down here, green guy rolling his dice is absolutely amazing, but war guy's a bit rubbish. Okay, fine, we'll accept those rolls. We now have got quite a nice supply of dice up there. Okie dokie, let's see what happens. Okay, a guy with a bandage around his head. The adventurer, let me present... Tabar, maybe. Let's pronounce, let's call him Tabar. Uh, an old friend of mine. This is the famous Tholomite explorer who successfully navigated the Sea of Torment near the Western Isles. Oh, well done. Good job, sir. And I returned alive, the man proudly asserts. Now I will accomplish what no other has yet done. I will explore the archipelago and return with the legendary pearls. Okay, crack on. Ah, there's a new person. There's Vera. I don't believe it for an instant. His ship will leave to cheers and disappear forever into the waters of torment, just like those before him. Yeah, the waters of torment. I would not like to sail on the waters of torment, if I'm completely honest. The Western Isles hide marvels that I ache to discover, the explorer exclaims. But my ships need repairs, and I need to recruit new crews. Unfortunately, I have no more money. Help me, and I promise you a share in the great riches I will gather on the islands. Oh, Tabar is a surprising man. I would not necessarily bet on his failure. Wow. Absolutely gleaming endorsement there, indeed. The price he demands is high and for less than certain result. Okay, so we can spend, well, it caps out at two there. We could spend two of our fate points on funding this chappie's expedition because we spend three, but then because we're bold, we get one back. Okay, we could do that, or we could just tell him to just you know, go away and clear off and try not to drown. Do you know what? No goods, no glory. We've got five of those. It's fine. Let's fund this thing. You won't regret it, Tabar exclaims. The explorer departs for Zell here, where his three ships lie at anchor. Several days later, you learn that he took to the sea in the direction of the Sea of Torment. Okay, right, ah, so he doesn't come back yet. We have to wait and see what happens. A crystalline serpent has been seen in Lake Arhaven. It's all going on around Lake Arhaven, isn't it? Crikeys. Okay, right, what's that thing about then? So a crystalline serpent requires six war dice to go and have a go at. We've got eight. We could, we could go and have a go at that but we might not win. But then we could re-roll it with some of our fate points. Let's have a go, shall we? Let's go and do our first bit of combat. So here we go. Let's send you in and we'll throw in our extra dice just there. So we've got eight dice against their six. The only thing is there is a risk now. 
if we fail, the other things, if we failed, it was probably a little bit, yeah, a little bit sort of rubbish. If we fail here, there is a 15% chance of injury where he is unavailable for three turns, or there is a little bit of a chance of him being dead. So yeah, they lose their counselor and also the artifact goes with them as well. Um, do you know what? what? He's a brave noble hero with dashing hair. Let's go for it. Let's have a go and see what happens. So let us fight the Crystalline Serpent. And if we need to re-roll it, we can. So come on, come on, come on. Give us some good rolls here. Three, four, four against there. Two, take that Crystalline Serpent. Boom, in your crystal face. So we get the Coins of Bribes. Oh, we get magic bribery coins. Um, We could give that to her. We could give that to her. That could be quite good. Uh, yeah, go on. Absolutely. Yeah, we won't sell it for a fate point. We'll, we'll give them to her. So that means that she is a little bit better at doing the diplomatic stuff. Okay, now the only thing is, yeah, we have no knowledge dice and no war dice now. So if somebody comes to attack us, we're going to be in trouble. And also, we're really, really not knowledgeable anymore. But okay. Um, right. What else can we do? Is it worth now going to have a chat with Falador over there? Or do we wait until next turn and give ourselves the advantage on the dice? I think, I think we can buy and sell dice, by the way. If we wanted to, say, buy some crops, we could buy some knowledge dice. But, uh, but yeah, we have to sacrifice other dice from other areas. So we won't be doing that right now, but it's something we might want to think about. Um, how about we do get dice for now? We'll do this. Yeah, she now rolls three. She rolls three of those, which is great. Um, you roll three. You could roll two war dice. Oh, do we get to roll two war dice? That would be good. That would be really good if you could roll two war dice because we have no war score at all. And we probably need that more importantly than knowledge at the minute. You can roll the greens. You can roll the reds. Yeah, okay. Why not? Rolly, rolly, roll. Mixed result. Green guy outstanding. Oh, a new person. Absolutely wonderful. Right, yeah. Accept that. It's looking pretty good. Okay, right. Go to next turn. Oh, that's probably bad. That's probably a terrible thing. The Rift. A gaping hole has appeared in the road to the port. Stone shops, men and horses have all been engulfed into the city's underbelly. Oh no, it's just a massive kind of pothole. The fissure is impressive and forms a crater which seems to end in a bottomless pit. How can it end in a bottomless pit? That, that does not compute, but okie doke. Dull thuds rise from the depths at regular intervals. Oh no, is a balrog going to come out or something? The echo of a strange breath is mixed with occasional jolts. No one dares venture into the sunken road. I do not blame them. And the only access to Stag Square, home to Thyla's great market, is completely blocked. The merchants of the port are calling for an urgent solution. They are prepared to pay for it with their own money. Okay, good news. The work must wait. We must descend to the rift, bring back the bodies, and try to understand what has happened. Okay, winter is coming and every day counts. If we don't begin the works now, they are likely to drag on for a long time. And the merchants will go elsewhere if Stag Square becomes inaccessible. Okay. So, do we allow the merchants to repair all the stuff at no cost to us, or do we go and explore the rift, which will give us an extra fate point, because again, we're bold, bold seems to be a good choice, but is that going to upset the merchants in the long run? I think it might make the merchants a bit cross, but it does get us a fate point, which we can use for re-rolling dice or getting better people onto our council. Let's refuse the merchant's offer, let's go and explore the rift, because what's to say... The merchants take all this time repairing this big rift and filling in the big hole. And then they go, hooray, it's finished. Let's put the last brick in. No, you know, not, not, not with the hammer. Hooray, it's all done. And then the thing that caused the rift goes, are you finished? Right, hang on a minute. Blah. And then just creates another rift. I think we need to figure out what caused it to make sure it doesn't happen again. So let's go and have a little look in the rift. Despite the protestations of the merchants, the road to the port is closed off by the guard. The sewer workers from the Fountain Tower prepare to descend into the rift. Do we not want to take some soldiers? Maybe some soldiers would be good. The first man slides uh, carefully into the crater and disappears into the pit. The earth begins to tremble. The foul stench rises from the bowels of the city. And a big, horrifying monster has emerged. The abomination that springs from the pit makes one of the sewer workers into a mere mouthful. That is horrible. It's a big, kind of weird, monstery super worm. Okay, that's bad. The creature takes its prey and disappears as quickly as it appeared. Oh, okay. Does that mean now there's a massive hole in the town? We need to slay this horror before panic engulfs the city. Ah, uh, yeah, about that. How difficult is it to kill? Six. Kill the creature from the hole. We've only got, we've only got two. We've only got two war, war dice right now. This, this could be bad. This could be a, a problematic thing. Okay, right. First things first. We've now got 12 
influence dice. So how difficult were you to influence? You were 10 and you were 10. How about we use you to pop over to here and see if you can sign a non-aggression pact with old grumpy king chops there. So if we do that, a 62% chance of success. So yeah, it, it's more than 50-50. So it's, it's a little bit higher that we should succeed. But if we do that, it improves relations and maybe he won't kill us as much. Because yeah, we can uh, get a little bit sort of, yeah, we can be, oh, we can be entirely neutral. Hooray, we can be so neutral to each other. We can be entirely ambivalent to each other's existence. Um, Let's, let's re-roll, no, not re-roll. Let's roll that. And just cross our fingers and hope for the best. Come on, come on, diplomatic lady. You can do this. We've got two extra dice. Okay, fingers crossed. Rolling. We've got three, four, five. Five, five. I think if it's equal, we actually succeed. Falador is now neutral. King Ulrich has little interest in us, but can no longer, but he's no longer an enemy to be feared. That was wonderful. That worked very well indeed. So Falador now sort of are okay with us. Which is excellent. So our haven still don't like us. They still think we're idiots, but that's okay. Maybe. Do we want to go spying with the spy? The spy isn't any spying yet. Can we go and spy on somebody? Well, that's nine. Who can we spy on that's a bit easy? Edelmar is only seven. Yours is eight. What about the, the town down here on the coast? That's eight as well. Um, but do we want to go and spy on someone that's neutral? Because if we get found out, that's a bad thing. Um, yeah, the spy can get captured or killed if they get found out. Um, maybe we'll save the spy points. I'm a little bit concerned at the, the creature. The creature from the hole isn't going to be killed anytime soon by us <laughs> because we haven't got enough combat points. So what we might need to do is, how about we do this? So smuggling, oh no, hang on, weapon. Let's buy, let's buy some weapons for the cost of three of those dice. So we get three, um, we get three war dice for selling three of the Intrigue dice. Do we sell three of those as well? Let's do that. Let's trade off some of our dice to get us six war dice. So, okay, so buy those in and then get dice. We won't get him to roll anything. He can go and lead the charge. Um, so you roll a couple of dice. In fact, do we want... She should go in, shouldn't she? Because he should, he should roll those dice and give us a chance of getting three extra dice. So you go and roll those. And, okay, yeah, I'll accept that. And now, if we drag you into here, we've got 10 war dice to have a go at this thing. And we'll expend them all because there's a giant worm eating all of our people. So, yeah, I think we might need to concentrate on this a little tiny bit. So, um, yeah, let, do we want to put it down to 70% and save one dice? They've got six against our nine. And that saves one dice. Yeah, go on. Let's save one dice then. That might be a tragic mistake. We can re-roll it if it all goes horribly wrong. Um, okay. Right. Uh, now, I don't know... I don't know how... Sort of how many faces on the die have the sort of... The bird sort of eagerly symbol thing on how many don't. The chances of that happening must be very, very small indeed. Oh my goodness me. Okay. <laughs> wow. Okay, does that mean we can re-roll eight dice? Four, five, six... Yeah. I think we can re-roll eight of our dice for one fate point. So let's do that. We've got four of them. So let's re-roll and see if we can kill that creature a bit better. Right, we'll re-roll eight. This is this is much more, This that's encouraging. There we go, five versus two. Hooray, we had to use a fate point, but it worked. The chance of that must have been absolutely minuscule. Okay, fine, right, we've killed the thing. The fight was terrible. Several men lost their lives, but we managed to kill the creature. The monster climbed out of the hole under the dumbfounded gaze of the onlookers and was chased through the streets by a group of 20 soldiers through to King's Square. Ah, we got our uh, fate point back. That's quite nice. Oh, and then it was just sort of killed to death, was it? Oh, okay, fine. Lovely. Right, it was brutally horribly killed to death. We can't do anything else. So, uh, yeah, move it on to the next turn. It is time to remove the remains of the sewer worm. Yes, it is. On display to all in King's Square, the corpse of the creature has become an attraction for the people of Thyla and the neighbouring cities. While well, the works the back for the pit begin in the road to the port, and a large fire is prepared to incinerate the worm. Okay, the crowd presses close to attend the great cremation. When the flames die down, a deathly silence falls in King Square. The creature is intact. Uh oh, it's not going to come back, is it? Don't come back to life. Its skin is impervious to fire. If I had just a few pieces, I think we could make some incredible armour. The creature was dismembered by the guard, but some intact skin fragments are collected. Okay. Oh, that's quite good. The remains of the worm are thrown into the river. 
Oh, good. <laughs> Just chuck it into the river. Where do we get the drinking water for the city from? The river... Oh, <laughs> OK. And life in the city resumes its course. Apart from nobody can drink anything ever again because all their water's full of dead worm. OK. We can make the army using the sewer's worm skin when you give the word. And an ancient temple has appeared. OK. So turn six comes round. What's going on here then? So make viscous armour costs us six knowledge dice and we have entirely none and the ancient temple requires five exploration points we've got four i think we might need to have a turn of just can we hang on right we're not doing much in the way of spying spy man is is just you know gathering bits and bobs how about we do this let's use four of our spy dice to get three knowledge points so we'll do that we'll buy those in thank you very much Spy guy. That's all good. And then everybody else, just get us some dice in your specialised area, please. Let's see what we can do. Green guy, I'm looking at you to get two of those. You've been very good so far. Ah, oh, you've let me down, green guy. Um, no, that's pretty good. Two black, one blue, two yellow, one green. Accept that. And that's it. We can't do anything else. Our turn is indeed done. It is all over. Uh, right, okay. Madman with a stick. Hello, madman with a stick. Refugees. Oh, no, that's fine. You can come in. Wearing a dirty, worn tunic, the hairy, bearded man looks like a beggar from the city's cesspit neighbourhood. It sounds delightful. I bet house prices there are absolutely rocketing. A small tattered pigeon coos on his guano-covered shoulder. <laughs> okay. I am Azel, guide to the people of Harmony. I am also known as the Bird Preacher, he says. After much wandering, my people are hungry and exhausted. We humbly request the hospitality of the valley's leading city. We are excellent craftsmen. We work hard and live on little. I see only mouths to feed. Drive them out! You're quite angry, aren't you? You're fighty and angry. There are only 100 of them, and we don't have enough craftspeople. Let them set up camp on Ironworkers Square, near the forges and workshops. If you want to let them in, send them to the Mound Square in the cesspit. Okay. So allow them to go into the Ironwork Square, the Artisan Quarter. Okay, they are craftspeople, it says. Um, oh no, does it say? Yeah, we're excellent craftsmen. Okay, I mean, how do you know he's telling the truth? I don't know. Let them settle in Mound Square in the slums of the cesspit or make them go away. I mean, I don't think we want to make them go away. As long as he doesn't you know, come too near us with his bird poo shoulders, it'll all be fine. Do we tell them to go into the main bit or do we tell them to set up in the slums of the cesspit? I'm a little bit worried they might go a bit kind of bonkers if we put them into the main fancy artisan quarter are they just going to just you know steal loads of stuff because they're you know they're refugees and they're hungry and all that kind of stuff so yeah do they do we trust them enough to put them into the fancy bit or do we tell them yes you can come in but go to mound square in the slums of the cesspit um oh go on go into what the iron works where go into the artisan quarter azel thanks you and bows respectfully the city gets open and the column of the destitute sets up camp in the large ironworkers square. The installation of these ragged strangers in the middle of the city is received with suspicion by the people. Oh, bother. Okay, we've lost three of our dice. Oh, that was bad. Okay, right, that was a bad decision. Okay, okay, never mind. Never mind. Um, can we make that armour yet? Not quite. Uh, what was that one again? That was five. It was five to go and look at the ancient temple. The thing is, somebody else might be going to look at the ancient temple as well. Um, okay, how about, how about, we just, everybody just do this. Everybody do this for a turn. Just grab a load more dice for this particular go. We could do with you, Diplomacy Lady, getting all those uh, three dice, please. That'd be really good. Oh, military guy. That is shocking. That is absolutely shocking. Everyone else did okay except you, military man. What happened? What went on there? Did you nod off? Okay, fine. Accept that terrible roll. And that's it. We can't do anything else right now. So, uh, yeah. Okay, okay, right. Move it on. Okay. Some sort of wizard has appeared. The Archivist. An old man standing before the throne does not give his name. Okay. We shall call you Colin. Hello, Colin. He answers that he is an archivist called Colin, sent by his colleagues with an important request. You're sceptical. No one has ever met these famous archivists. They are said to be travelling the valley to spy on monarchs and their subjects. Ah, okay. Then return to their secret manor to record the chronicles of the world. You could also just be taking loads of information back to one central point and then plotting against everybody to overthrow all of the kings and take over. Okay, I understand your concern, O oh king, the old man begins. Like air, we are everywhere. There are humans, but we remain invisible to their eyes. 
We are here, however, always ready to read what hands write, remember what mouths say, and listen to what ears hear. I'm here to ask your help. My request is simple. We would like to enter the Opal Tower of Edelmar. Okay, what is in the Opal Tower of Edelmar? I've no idea. If it's you know, full of rubbish and old furniture, then yeah, they can pop in. It's impossible. Queen Lodry sealed it during her father's reign. And we know why. I don't know why. Tell me why. You remember these events. The Opal Tower was the largest library in the valley and the sanctuary of a group of scholars known as the Augurs. Okay, right. Around 10 years ago, the Queen suspected them of being behind a conspiracy and had them all executed before blocking up the entrance of their tower. Lodry lives in constant fear of being assassinated and sees conspiracy in every shadow. Okay, she believes the closure of the tower sends a message to all her internal and external enemies. Unless we make her an ally or bring her city under our control, she will never give in. Okay, one day, whether willingly or by force, she will reopen the Opal Tower. Uh, oh, is the Opal Tower not in... in ours? It's not in our city. Oh, it's somewhere else. It's in Lodry City. Okay, uh, the old man continues. I'll return one day, and if you keep your word, we will show our gratitude. I will ensure Lodry allows you to enter the Opal Tower. I don't want to bow before the Queen of Edelmar, nor throw my army against the walls of her city. Right, so Edelmar has the Opal Tower in it, and the diplomacy lady says she believes the closure of the tower sends a message. Unless we make her an ally or bring her city under control, she will never give in. Maybe we work on Edelmar with some with some diplomacy that we don't have any dice in. Oh, botherations. Okay, never mind. Um... Let's, oh, let's just promise, and then it'll probably go horribly wrong at some point. Go on, then. Uh, see you soon, says the old man. It leaves the Great Hall. Uh, maybe not quite so soon. You decide to make Lodger your ally or conquer city before the return of the Archivist. Okay, right, so before Colin comes back, we have to make that place um, our buddy. Okay, right, what's going on? A giant raptor soars in the skies over the Storm Peak. Easy prey for our archers, if we had any, but to think the might have all been killed. Yeah, this place here... We need to make our buddies. The only thing is, we can't go in and fight them because we've got no real troops. And in terms of in terms of any form of diplomacy, we're, we're on minus one diplomacy dice. So that, that's not going to cut it either. Uh, okay, can we go to the ancient temple? Yes, we could. What does the raptor do? That requires four war dice. Okay, let's go to the temple. Let's put Chappie there, green Chappie over there, and use up all of our dice. 69% chance of success. Let's give it a go to get another exciting common artifact. Uh, if we fail, we could get injured, we could just disappear, or we could die. Okay, do you know what? No guts, no glory. Let's try it. You're an explorer, you're bold and brave. Here we go. One, two, three, four versus four. Good grief, that was close. That was close. But what do we get? A shifting map. Okay. Oh, that's exciting. The Marauder's map. We found the Marauder's map. Um, yeah, give that give that to him. Give that to Chappie. Makes perfect sense. Yeah, Albar giving you a shiny map. You enjoyed that moment there. Have a look at the map. It's lovely. Okay, this place here, Idelmar, Edelmar, however you pronounce that. So we need nine. We need nine diplomacy dice. Currently, we have minus one. Is it worth... Is it worth, maybe we'll trade, let's get, let's have a festival. Yay, festival, woo. So we'll trade away, oh, I feel a bit bad for the spy guy because we just keep trading away all of his things because we're not using him for anything. But if we can get ourselves three of those, that brings us up into you know, the positive. So we'll do that. We'll spend five of our sort of spying intrigue points to get back up into the positive with our diplomacy. So, okay, we'll do that. That gives us two. That uses him up, so there's only three people left. And everybody else, can you all just have a go at rolling those dice? So we're going to have a go at five of those dice. But of course, these two are not that good at diplomacy stuff. I do want to get you to roll those. I think we might need some more military stuff. If something comes to attack us, we're going to be in trouble. We're going to be a bit useless. So, okay. So roll three war dice, four of the blue dice. Come on, come on, come on. Give us some good stuff. Oh, finally. Right, okay. He rolls three of those. But, um, but yeah, only two blue Oh, yeah, go on. Accept that. That's absolutely fine. We're going to need to work on that. I think we need to get a treaty with those. So what does treaty do? Improving relations. So, okay, they can trade with that city. Oh, well, that can be quite handy. I don't that makes them our ally, but we can certainly have a bit of trade going on with them. Okay, that could be quite handy. Um, I don't think we can do anything else. Oh, no. Oh, we could have made that armor. Never mind. We'll do that next time around. We'll do it next time. I have news of Tabar. <gasps> 
the guy that we invested in, the boat guy. He has returned to the port of Zelhir and says that he successfully reached the Western Isles. Several days later, the explorer enters the throne room. His men carry large sealed chests. I've succeeded in doing something that no one else has ever done. I was almost stuck there. I lost two ships, but I've returned and look what I've brought back. Please be a load of money. The chests are opened, revealing piles of glistening pearls. Half is yours, as promised. Six fate points? Good grief. That's very good. Everyone will remember that it was thanks to the help of the King of Thyla that a man of the valley was able to explore the archipelago of the Sea of Torment for the very first time. The city revels in the reflected glory of Tabar's exploits. Oh, beautiful. Oh, okay, that was great. Okay, that was the investment. Now, I imagine, I imagine there is a sort of a random chance there. I imagine that there is a storyline arc of that where it goes horribly wrong and, you know, the chappy doesn't make it back and stuff. Oh, we've got eight. We've got eight influence dice. That's very good. And also, also, we could, with our now ten fate points, could we get ourselves a new counsellor? Could we get ourselves someone who's a bit better at doing the spying? We could get Livia. She gets us four plot, but also one diplomacy. She could be quite good. She could be quite handy to get in indeed because she gets us extra diplomacy as well as plotting. She is five. She is half of our points. But, um... Yeah, let's let's get her in. Absolutely. Yep, you can come in. There we go. Replace Rello with Livia. Yes, please. Welcome aboard. Little bit expensive, but that's absolutely fine. Uh okay, what was the bird? It was it was war. It was war points. How about how about this? Right, get dice. Let's get you, war lady, to roll. In fact, no, 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 no. Hang on. No, no, not that. Not that. You, war lady, go and make this armor. Knowledge lady, even. Knowledge lady, war lady, you. Go and make the armour. So seven versus six. And we could re-roll it if we want to. Because we have got some points. Do you know what? Let's give it a go. Let's, let's, let's try, shall we? So we got three against four versus there too. So we've made some sort of magic armour, which is exciting. The viscous armour. Plus one and plus two. Oh. Oh, that's very good. Now, the only thing is, who do we give that to? Who do we give that to? Can we give it to him? Does he take his other armour off? Or does it all sort of, you know, compound? Does he wear two lots of armour? Because that would be great for him. Okay, hang on. Let's just try. Can we do that? Thorian already has an artefact. Okay, so we can swap it out. Swapping the artefact for a new one will cost you one of those. Um, Yeah. Okay. Swap that out, please. Because it's better for him. So now he gets more war points and an adventure point as well. And now we have the commander's armour that we could, for now, put on her because that gets her an extra war point. So yeah, okay, yes, absolutely. Oh, that was very good. That was very good. Okay, right, so he's now got some fancy sort of sticky armour on made out of the body of a big insect. And then she's got the other fancy armour on with a big hole in the front. Lovely. I think maybe we go and sort out this raptor as well. So let's send in newly armoured war guy... So we'll also throw your two extra points in. So uh, six versus four, plus we can re-roll it. Let's give that a go as well, shall we? I feel like we're living a little bit dangerously. I feel better with, yeah, happy with seven or eight. But if we can get this done now, let's see what it does. Oh, we're going to need to re-roll it, are we? No, just, just sort of scrape through. Okay, so lovely. What do we get? The eye of the spy. Okay, I spy with my little eye, an eye that belongs to a spy. Uh, there it is. Let's give that to Plotting Lady. There you go, Plotting Lady. You can have some of that stuff. And now, can we... Next turn, we'll try and do that thing. Okay, get dice for now. And, yeah, do do the things you're good at. Just you two roll those things. And, ah, yeah, oh, Green Guy. Green Guy, you've let us down. You've let us down, Green Guy. Okay, accept that. End turn. All done. Crikey. Okay, some people have killed the wolf. Wolves! The imposing body of the wolf lying at your feet impresses the nobles in the Great Hall. The head of the clans of the Amber Forest, a dense forest to the north, begins to speak. Large numbers of wolves, just like this, have entered the forest, he cries. They are making our logging work increasingly difficult. I can imagine. I can imagine. Wolves trying to eat you while you're chopping down a tree. Could be a bit awkward. We are considering petitioning King Gorm of Tholum to help rid us of them, but I prefer the first request to help of the King of Thyla, to whom we supply the bulk of our wood. Protect us from the wolves, O King, or our wood will unfortunately be harder to come by in your city. Are you blackmailing me, head of the Amber Forest clans? I rather suspect you might. The wood from the northern clans is not our only supply. 
and the city would suffer no shortage if this source were to become unavailable. I could send a troop to the Amber Forest, but they would need to be permanently stationed there to protect the loggers as they work. Our scouts in the Ethan Forest are the best hunters. They could quickly rid the loggers of this nuisance. We have very little in the way of any dice. Um, soldiers will protect the northern foresters. We haven't got any soldiers, so we can't do that. Our scouts will hunt the walls. My apologies, but the Amber Forest is not part of my kingdom. What will happen with that, though? Are we going to lose some sort of resource? Apparently not. According to her, city suffers no shortage. But is she is she right? I'm not sure. I am not sure. Let's get the scouts to do it. He seems good. The scouts are the best hunters. They could quickly rid the loggers of the nuisance. Yeah, go on, scouts. I will lead the Ethan scouts to the north. Don't die. You've got a magic map. You've got the Marauders map. Please don't be killed. Ah, Right, there is a thing and an old mine as well. Okay, right, so what's this one up here doing then? That is, oh, that's seven. That's seven. That is a lot. Crikey, we've got one. And the old mine is, oh, that's another exploration thing. Okay, right, we need loads of exploration points, everybody. And nobody can generate hardly any of them. Um, How about, though, can we go and have a go at this? Shall we go and have a go at diplomacy? Here, do you know what? Let's get, um, hang on, get dice. Can you, because you're special at diplomacy, can you have a go at just rolling two of those? If you could get another one, that would be great. Can you have a go at that? That'll do. Yeah, I'll take that and then go to Edelmar. Let's try and do a treaty with the people of Edelmar. Or, yeah, Edelmar. Uh, right, throw all the dice in. So 11 versus 9. We can re-roll some of them. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, okay, right. This has got to work. Please work. Please be incredibly successful. It's not looking good. It's looking really shoddy indeed. Oh my goodness me. <laughs> Two. Two out of all of those. The chance of that are very small. Uh, Joe, you know what? Let's re-roll it. We've got those points. We might as well use them for something nice. Come on. Re-roll it. Oh my word. Okay, yeah. That seemed to go quite well, didn't it? Fate has indeed swung in our direction that time. Okay. Continue with that. And now she's cordial. She's agreed to trade between our two cities. What does that mean? What what does that mean between us? We get two... What's that? What's that? Is that two of those every turn? Do we get two knowledge dice every turn? Is that what that means? There's a thing saying plus two, but I'm not entirely sure what that gives us. Um, okay, it gives us plus two of a thing. Yay for the thing that we get two more of that we didn't use two. And I think everybody else, just roll your dice. Just roll the dice and let's see what we get. Roll the dice. Oh, yes. Oh my goodness, yeah, absolutely, except that, that was wonderful. I have news of Azel's refugees. Their presence has been accepted by the people. Oh, these are the craftsmen. Oh, that's good. Uh, they're good craftsmen and will not stand for receiving a pittance on their work, barely enough to survive on. Some have left the filthy tents on Ironworkers Square. They are now being housed and fed by city residents. Oh, this is lovely. The people of Harmony have found their place and make the craftspeople prosperous. Plus one fate, plus three diplomacy. Well, that was very welcome. I'm glad we put our trust in them in the end. I mean, it could have gone a little bit Wonkaloids one way, but there we go. We got it sorted. Ah, trade and smuggling. Okay, right. There's a new trade button. Trade. He can exchange dice with other free cities, not vassals. Click the green trade or orange smuggling button. <gasps> smuggling. Naughty. If you don't have at least one dice to trade, the button is disabled. Oh, oh, I see. So now we can trade. We can trade two we can get two green dice to adventure dice for one knowledge dice uh yeah absolutely let's do that that gives us six adventure dice oh we need seven for hunting the wolves um okay okay people let us go forth let's just what else have we got we've got the old mine that's adventuring as well do you know what everybody just have a go of just rolling your own things oh my goodness me she gets six she gets six of those dice right everybody just have a roll of dice War guy is absolutely doing amazingly well. Okay, right, accept that. That's pretty good. Move on to the next turn. I want to go and get those walls. We didn't keep our promise to help the loggers in the Amber Forest. Give me a give me a moment. Good grief. <laughs> I was on it. We're gonna do it in a minute. That's where we were heading. Oh, botherations. I've learned the clans grew tired of waiting for our help and petitioned King Gorm of Tholum instead in exchange for a large quantity of free wood. Oh, King Gorm, la di da. You didn't keep a word. Oh, we lost a fate point. Oh, okay. Right. That's a bit of a shame. I was kind of going to go and do that now. That was that was my plan. Um, in the Great Swamps, our men found a cursed sanctuary infested with ghouls. 
Our army could explore it. Uh, yeah, or the army could not go poking around a great big nest of ghouls. That sounds terrifying. Do you know what though? I think we've seen enough of Silmaris Dice Kingdom to get a good picture of what the game is all about and how it works and all that kind of stuff. And it's really enjoyable. I like this an awful lot. It's a really enjoyable game. I think once you get your head around the concept of your dice sort of pool up here is different to the dice that you can get from your counselors down here. I think once you understand that concept that, for example, Diplomacy 2 of you just there doesn't mean that every turn you get two Diplomacy dice. You kind of have to tell her to go and roll for those dice and see if you're lucky and get the sort of the eagle bird shapey thing. And if you do, you get to in your pool. Once you understand how to actually work the counselors and top up your pool of dice up here, then, um, then yeah, it all becomes a little bit clearer and you can start making sort of plans. You can start maybe thinking, right, I am going to try and get loads of diplomacy points, loads of the influence dice, and we're going to go and try and unite everybody. We're going to go be friends with everybody, do loads of trading. It's all going to be lovely. Or you might go, Joe, you know what? I want to go to war. Let's go and get a bit killy and stabby, get loads of war dice, get a good general in. I quite like that. I like the way you can sort of, you know, do it in lots of different ways. We've also seen that it's a game that you can't sort of please everybody with. You can't win at everything, I don't think. It's one of these where you're going to have to sort of sometimes sacrifice one thing in order to let another thing happen. And, you know, we saw there with the wolves, we struggled. We struggled to get enough people together to go and hunt those wolves. We did not have enough adventure dice ready in time to go and get the wolves sorted. So we made a promise, it didn't deliver. And then, of course, yes, there was a knock-on effect of that. So, you know, you're not always going to win all of the things all of the time as well. So, yeah, it's a really interesting game. It is very, very enjoyable indeed. And I'm glad we took the time to have a little look at it. Hopefully you did enjoy it too. If you did, please do leave a like. That would be most marvellous indeed. And also, if you are not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with all the other stuff that we get up to in the Geek Cupboard. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard, and I will see you next time. They've ripped my arms off, ripped my legs off. I mean, you know, unfortunately they didn't rip anything else off. Yes, I'm off my face on mushrooms. Why, Lady Charlotte, I, uh, I would certainly love to taste your cake. The King of the West is an idiot. I am off my face on mushrooms. I mean, asking me questions isn't going to be my strong point at the minute.